My name is Elizabeth Frigols. I am professor at the Universitat de Valencia. And today we are interviewing Delia Ferreira Rubio, chair of Transparency International. And I would like, first of all, thank Ms. Ferreira for her um, uh, kindness for accepting our invitation to be interviewed here. It's a pleasure to be with you. Delia Ferreira Rubio is president of the NGO International Transparency, co-president of the Global Future Council of Transparency and Global Economic Forum, consultant on political, financial, anti-corruption and transparency matters for many NGOs and international organizations. Why did you choose to pursue a career in politics? Well, in political science, I would say, not in politics. I had been advising politicians in Argentina, both at the Congress and the executive branch, uh, but I am not a politician. I uh, have devoted my career to political issues or institutional issues. Uh, why? Because I think uh, that we can uh, help a better world, let's say, or a better country if we respect rule of law, uh, democracy, freedom of speech and association and all that. So I, I have always worked in that field, either as uh, an, uh, an assistant to the Secretariat of the Interior here, organizing uh, the, the presidential election, or helping parliamentarians in both houses uh, on how to, uh, to put forward an agenda in terms of uh, drafting bills, discussing bills, et cetera. Do you consider that, well, as we've seen, women are more involved in the political sphere now. Do you consider there is a number, a noticeable change in number of women that want to be part of it? And I think we have made progress in terms of the presence of women. Uh, but um, politics is a complicated uh, space. So in, in some countries, uh, women are not very fond of participating in political activities. Um, it depends on the culture and we have to change culture. Nordic countries are much more advanced than the rest of the countries in that sense. Um, but we have to keep on working for that. I, I started when, uh, working on gender and corruption in the uh, at the beginning of the um, uh, 2000s. In that time, there was the, the belief that women were less corrupt than men. This was a theory supported by the World Bank in, in the research teams, which ends suggesting that uh, if you put more women in deciding positions or decision-making positions, uh, you have solved the problem of corruption. In order to destroy that absolute nonsense correlation, I did the correlation in Latin America and there was no correlation at all because there is no correlation on that. What would be, uh in general, a good starting point for a career path regarding NGOs such as Transparency International or any other similar organization? From the labor point of view, the starting point is being uh, in touch with the organizations and looking for the opportunities, of course, apply for the opportunities. But I think that what is important is to uh, have a starting point in the substance you will be able to devote your life, your professional life too. And, and in that sense, you are already doing the right thing, uh, preparing yourself, using the university opportunity to contact. I've, I found, for instance, this uh, conversation in other language very important. Uh, we have a very nice language, our Spanish, but uh, the international language is English. So you have to be prepared to communicate in English, to write in English, et cetera. So you need to have that tool at your disposal. But uh, I think that more important than trying to do a career 
at the international organizations, and there are a few of them, Oxfam, Amnesty International. There are uh, there are lots of NGOs around the world, but the international NGOs are rather uh, few, I would say. Um, much more than starting a career at the international organizations, I would say start a career uh, in the substance you would like to work. I would say start with the topic, the substance, became experts. Do you think that the attitude towards corruption of citizens and governments are important to the existence of corruption in a specific society? Or are social and economic factors more important than that? Impunity is a great incentive for corruption. Corruption is a cycle, which in English uh, allows me to use a, a, an acronym, which is SHE, and it has nothing to do with gender. It's steal, hide, and enjoy. That's the cycle of corruption. And we have to cut that, that cycle. And impunity and indifference on the part of the population, put it simple. Uh, this slogan so many times heard in Latin America, they steal, but they do some things for us. So we keep on voting. Okay, that indifference and, uh, and mixed with impunity uh, is a great incentive for, corruptions, because, for corruption because it is the, the message we send with impunity and indifference is keep on going, there will be no consequences. Carlos Alfredo asks, how does Transparency International manage to stay transparent and impartial, considering that part of its financing is obtained through the initiative of private actors and even government agencies? Well, we have a very strict um, donations policy, and uh, not, not all companies can uh, give us money and not all governments can give us money. We work uh, with, uh, of course, our balance sheet and all the information is public without the need of any petition. Uh, we work according to the most uh, ex ex exigent um, uh, standards in terms of accountability. And of course, we have an external accountant firm that change every five years. Um, we publish our, our balance sheet and a set. And of course, uh, we uh, when we signed an agreement for a program with uh, the aid agency of any government, of course, we don't work with any government, but if we signed an agreement with the country uh, aid agency, uh, we are very uh, we we take it seriously to incorporate all the rules that we need in order to guarantee our independence in the results. 